Affinity version 3 comes with some great new features. One of them is the hatch feature. It's super powerful, super useful. However, it does come with a lot of quirks and you'll probably notice in this video some of them as I go through it. I have found it somewhat frustrating, but let's just go with it and you will create some amazing designs once you master it. So what can you use it with? Well, it's lines, it's a hatch feature and lines that can be dashes and dots, etc. You can combine them in many ways, but the tool to actually manipulate it is this one, the fill tool. But you can see a design here already, which is slightly more complex than I want. So I'm just gonna go over to the appearance panel and I'm just gonna delete that. And also I'm gonna remove that. I don't want the stroke or it's just change, maybe make it black. So you can see that. And also I've got a layer effect applied. So just click here and remove those. And you can see, you can add all kinds of things like layer effects. But now we've got your basic setup. Now I can actually go with the hatch feature. And the key thing again is this, make certain you've got the fill tool selected. And with that, you can see I've got elliptical now. It may be solid for you, it might be a solid color, green, etc. But just click here and then go to hatch. And hatch, you get this. It doesn't look very much. In fact, there's some lines there, very, very faint, I suspect. But what you can do, this is the general control of the lines. So you've got here the fill color for the lines and also the stroke color for the lines. Not this. This is for the whole, whole of the path, the layer. What I can now do is I'm just going to increase this. So I'm just going to increase that. And you can't see anything. Look at the setting. It's very odd, very high. I don't want it that high. I want it to say 100 or something like that, 1,100. And this is one thing you'll have to do when you're setting things up. You'll find that that scale does seem to set itself to some ridiculously large value at times and has been slightly frustrating. But you can see now I've got a hatch pattern there and I can manipulate it. So I can change, as I said, the width. So just change that. But it does depend on the scale setting. So you can put it to 100. You might want to set it to that and then work from there. But it does have a mind of its own, what it sets it at, sometimes 2000, etc. And you can also rotate it. And this is rotated for the entire set of the hatch. But what you can do is add multiple lines which build up to create that hatch pattern. So that's along this line. Just click here. And now you can see you've got this. You've got color, gradient, and hatch pattern. And you can go here to the line. You can see a line and you can just change this. And this changes it for that line. You can add multiple lines. So you don't have just one line. You could have two or three or four, but they're all using the same color. The color that you've set here. So if I go over here and set that to something else, I click on there and set it to red and click on there and let's just set it to black. It's changing that. If I create another line, so I've got a line there, I can go here and add another line, just plus down the bottom here. Just click that and you've got another line you can see there. Now you have got interactive controls. It's here. I find those very fiddly to use. It does seem to have a tendency to either go very wide apart or very, very close and you end up with a solid color, which seems a bit odd. But so I personally prefer just to use these. Maybe over time as I get to use this tool a bit more, I get more used to controlling how it does it. But I do find it just do, it does it too rapidly. And it, the defaults also are slightly fiddly. OK, so you've got this. Now I've got this separate line. I can manipulate this. So the rotation, so you can see I can rotate that. It's separate from this, this line. It's independent. And also you can see X and Y, which are very hard to see anything happening because it's lines. It doesn't make any difference. You're changing those. doesn't change. Only really notice it when you're using combinations of dashes and those sort of things. OK, so let's just expand out because you can use dashes as well. Just expand here. And this is for the second line. So second line, again, you've got shift, click there, and it will be subtle movements. It really only is more noticeable when you start changing these sort of settings. And there's the spacing. You can see you can change the spacing. But again, you control it here. But you'll notice it goes down to 50. Well, it might be a different value for you. But you can override it, just enter 20. So you can get closer. You don't have to just use the slider. You can just actually physically enter the value. But now you can go for dashes. So just click there, the plus, and I've just added dash. Now it's a light gray. 
would be nice if it just said D or something. It would have been great, but unfortunately it doesn't. So 20. Again, without space, you won't see anything. So let's go plus. This is like the stroke. So you've got a stroke, you have dots and dashes around it, and you can do combinations. So I'm just going to go for 20, say. And you can see now I've got these gaps here. And you can see the preview. The preview sort of matches this, sort of, if you look at it in a particular way. But you can add more than that. You can add another dash. And also, let's just click the plus. Click the plus, not the dash, the word. And also the spacing. And then go for, say, 10. And you can see you get these dots. And you can change this, maybe make it 0 0.5. Those sort of things. Whole range of different things. So you can create a range of different designs within this set. And you could have three or four lines, maybe four or five. I don't know if there's a limit. If you don't want the line, you can always just delete it. Here's the delete. Just select the line and then press delete. I'm not going to do that, but you, you can do it. Also, you can add another one. Just go plus. However, let's just go up here. Line. This one, you can see, has got those settings. That's line there. And again, you can just manipulate these settings. Maybe make that 20 and all kinds of things. Or if you don't want them, just want it lines. You can just remove them and you can see as you do that, you get that effect. Maybe just go with that. You don't have to have the dots and dashes for any of them. But if you have, you will get that. OK, you can modify the spacing for this one as well. Again, it's independent, so you can see you can just drag there. But as mentioned, you can't change the colours. They're all red and black. But you can get around that. I will show you how to get around that in a few seconds. However. You've got this now and you can manipulate again the where you can just change that maybe push that increase it decrease it change the scale in you can just change that and you can see now you get this and again you can use all those offsets and various x and y and all those sort of things can all be used now because you've got those you can just click here and you can do the shift and again you can enter say 30 so it, it does shift it does work they do do something if you go to x here and put 20 it will again shift again. Even though it doesn't appear in the default setting to actually do anything, it does actually manipulate that. Okay, so you've got that. You've created your design. You're really happy with design. It's a lot of work just to get that. And you think, oh, great, I've created all that. I want to save it. There's no preset, unfortunately. But of course, there is a way of doing it. All you need to do is go to styles. So go over to styles and here's the styles. And you can add quite a lot in these styles. It stores quite a lot of information. And this is over any number. You close your application, you come back to it later, it'll be there. It's not per document. Okay, I've got a category that I created, hatches. And now I can just go up here to styles and I can then go down here to add style from selection. So I've got this selection and it will store this current selection here into this and it <laughs> looks not very useful. Maybe rename it, etc. something more useful. I do find that the actual styles panel could be improved, maybe a better visual result. It's just way too small, too fiddly. Okay, so it's stored. It means if I go and click another one, let's just click another one. You can see there's one with dashes and another one there. And likewise, the one we just created. Now this is just for the fill. And you can see here the context fill. Well, there is a reason because you can go to stroke and now in stroke now obviously the hatch bit's gone because it defaults to the, you've got the solid well you've still got exactly the same you can go for hatch so you've got bitmap mesh mesh is a good one that's a new feature as well but hatch at the bottom and now stroke you have to be careful always make certain you look at it to make certain it is still set to stroke because it's quite easy to not be set to stroke. It goes back to fill. It seems to have a mind of its own and we'll put it back to fill. And then you'll be working thinking that's strange. Nothing's changing because it's not actually set. And you've got hatch there and you can click there and you've got your lines and patterns and you can then tweak the settings here and you go through all these and change different things, different spacings, different angles. And hopefully, with a bit of fiddly settings, you might find do you actually end up getting, let's just, because here it's black and black and black. So that's not much use, is it? So let's just change that to red and click there to say white or something else. And it's still a solid color. And that may be a problem of setting these ones 
or setting of these settings as well, the actual spacing. So let's just change that. It does appear that for some weird reason, the stroke does not seem to work very nicely with hatches. I just wanted to show it. This is another quirk in this. Maybe it does, but I want to point out you should theoretically be able to, to use the stroke and the hatch. It doesn't seem to be doing it at this point. Okay, maybe I'm wrong in the use of this. And maybe some of the settings, if you extend it bigger, smaller, and these settings here, it might do it, but it doesn't appear to do it. Okay, you can still manipulate the fill as well. Okay, so what we can do is you've got this panel, appearance. You can find all these panels, styles, appearance, etc. Window, vector, and styles and appearance down here. It's in the vector stuff because it was in originally in designer. It wasn't in photo. And the other stuff like layer isn't here. Photos. I think Finity is great because they've added all these different ones, but it does mean you have to remember, is it in vector or is it in something else? Bit fiddly to find it. Maybe you could use the help and do a search for it that way. Okay, so you've got that. Well, you can, you see, go here, you've got the fill, and you can add another fill. Personally, I find it a struggle to start from afresh with this. I found it very fiddly and hard to do. It can be done. You can set it again, all the scale and everything. But, but sometimes if you use it, suddenly it sets a scale that's ridiculous, like 400,000 or something. So I personally right click and duplicate because you get the same thing. So you've got this fill and this is above. So let's just click here, normal. And we're going to go down to difference. Now, of course, the difference between the both is exactly the same at the moment. It's still a hatch. It says it hatch here. You could change it to gradient or something else. It's a fill. They're independent. The one that's above and set to difference is independent from the fill that's below. So you could set it to bitmap or mesh. But I've got hatch. And you just click here. And you've got the same hatch patterns you had before. It's preview as well. And you can then there, you can just go here, the spacing, you can just change the spacing. Let's just change the spacing. So straight away, you can see by changing the spacing, you can see change because obviously the difference, you can just see that. And then you can also change the X. You can see there, you can get a difference there just by doing that and get some interesting designs there. And Y, that doesn't seem to have any actual change. Okay, but also you can go here, you've got rotation so you can see you can rotate it you can also go this one let's just try that one that doesn't have effect some do some don't but also what you can do is you've got these dashes as well you could change those so let's go here and maybe make it instead of that you make it 10. you can see you can build up quite a complex combination of all these things and with a bit of effort you can sort of create some truly weird and wonderful dash designs, which again, you can always save in your style. So if you're happy with this design, you can always go over to styles and just save it. Okay, what you can also do is you can go down here and this, this line here, which is controlling the hatch design overall, is only for this fill. If you go to the other fill, it will have different settings. You can have different settings. So you can go here and I can change line weight and it will change it for that fill. So you can see now I can change that and you can see you get a different effect like that. Maybe increase it, decrease. And I'm using difference. You don't have to use difference. You could use click there, uh, linear. Uh, let's go for hard mix, overlay and so on. You can create all kinds of lovely colorful designs. But at the moment, of course, I'm using the same colors. And this is overall for the same for the fill. So I can change this one to maybe, let's go for yellow. And also instead of black there, let's just click there and just change the color to say blue. And you can see now I've got even a weirder color combination and you could create some abstract designs with this sort of effect. Now, you can store this away in style as well. So again, you can go over here, you can alter it at any point later as well, of course. But you can go over here and just go here and add style from selection. So again, the preview is terrible, doesn't really help, doesn't really indicate what you've got, but it gives you something. You've got this. You're thinking, great, you've got lots and lots of fills, but I want transparency. So how do I get transparency? Well, you can. All you need to do 
And of course, because you've got multiple ones of fills now, you have to do both. You can go down here. So just click here. And this is for the colors for the lines and the fill. Just change, change it, just go up here and just click here. And now you've got transparency for that fill, for the one you've got currently selected. I can go to this one. Obviously, I still haven't got transparency there. I've got red, so click here. And again, I can just go here and set that to that. And now you can see I've got transparency. I haven't got any fills in this. I've just got the pure lines, the pure lines, which does mean I can go here. I've got the styles. I can save that again, but also I can go to layers and I can go down here to effects. So effects, just click there and I can go to Bevan and Boss and I can go for 3D and obviously other settings as well, add shadow, etc., etc. But you can see I've got these other settings, gradient overlay, but I can modify the radius and you get this sort of effect, line effects with some depth this time. And again, close. And with that, I can also go to styles and store this as well. Exactly the same as before. So this one, I can just go here and add styles from selection. Now, any changes I do, do not get reflected here. So I can go over this and tweak this and change this and combine it in different ways, add more fills. It doesn't change this style. This style has just the two fills as it was before, as well as the stroke up here that doesn't seem to be doing anything at this point. Maybe you do a video later when I've actually found out the settings to be able to get something from the stroke. It's possible, I guess. The gradient should work, but for some weird reason, the hatch doesn't seem to be doing anything at this point. Well, You've got this design now. You think, great, I've got some lines. I've got all these sort of things. What else can I do? Well, you can obviously manipulate it further down here. You could also go, instead of those, you could go with elliptical gradient, combine that, etc. But you could also apply some various effects. And instead of filters, you could apply filters, of course, but that will turn it into a pixel layer. I don't want to do that. I want to keep it live. So to keep it live, Go here instead with it selected, go to pixel, and then go down here to new live filter layer. And let's just go for one that's slightly, uh, maybe distort, something that you can see distorts it. So 12, so 12. And this point brings, puts the panel down there. I wish they would get not there, but put it somewhere else. It'd be nice if there was a preference. Please put in the comments below if you know a way to set it so it always puts it up the top. I don't want it down the bottom. I want it at the top, but it doesn't. And then you can modify the angle and you can see now you've got the angle effect there, the radius, and again, you can tweak that and you can move that there. And now, unfortunately, because of the way it's the size of everything, there's a li certain limits on this. The radius doesn't go anything too far, much more. Let's put it to a thousand. Yep, something like a thousand. And you can see you get this lovely curl design. Now it's still live. So it's live effect. I can always go over here and ellipse, twirl. I can edit it just by clicking there. And again, just tweaking this, preserve alpha, etc change blend modes, combine in different ways. All kinds of different designs can be created there as well. Also, of course, I can just duplicate this design and modify them all individually as well. So again, go over here, move tool. With this move tool, I can then press return or enter on the keyboard. And oops, with that, let's just go over to the ellipse. Make certain you select the ellipse, not the 12. So the ellipse is selected. Always in Affinity, make certain you've got what you think selected. Then press return or enter on the keyboard and you get the move duplicate. So you can then, of course, scale it, duplicate and scale, rotation and number of copies, etc. To create all kinds of weird and wonderful designs with your hash de hatch design, not hash design, a hatch design in Affinity version 3. Well, I hope you found this of interest. Sorry for all the quirky things that seem to be in it. You may find some more. Please put in the comments below if you found other odd features of this tool, because I have found the hatch does seem to have a slight mind of its own, the way it works. Hopefully, over time, I will get more and more used to how to actually use it and create sort of more sort of designs with a that I know I'm actually going to get. That's the key thing. Anyway, thoughts? Please let me know. Bye.